Hey guys, jumping on. I'm just gonna share this across the other page. Dealing with hotel internet in Malaysia, so we're gonna see how we go. Hey guys, say hi when you jump on. I'm just sharing this across to my other page. Yo, 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 what's up? Who's there? Announce yourself. Is it a lie? Tara, who else is on the line? Hey, Kendall. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this on my other Regan Hillier page. Hey, Sonia. Ellie, what's up? What's up? Hey, Anastasia. Emily. Hi. Hey, hey, Graham. How are you? Hey, George. George? Double George. Christine. Yo. What's up? Hey, Ellie. Alright, I'm gonna get this across my other page. Hey, Marissa. How's everyone going? Type in where you are in the world right now. I'd love to know. Oh, I know, I'm so glad. Sonia says, I'm so glad you have your live stream back. So am I. Trust me, so am I. The live stream gods took my live stream away from me. I don't know why. Maybe I was live streaming too much. Too much for Facebook to handle. <laughs> You're good? Where are you guys calling in from? Calling? Where are you watching from? Latonia, hey. Hey there. Awesome, New Zealand, Auckland, Kiwis in the house represent. Brizzy, nice, Sydney, cool. Hey Suzanne, where are you guys watching from? Adelaide, epic. I'm waiting for you to add, add what? Add more fun, do you want more fun? Queensland. Oh my gosh, it's moving too fast. Sydney, good. Hi, Las Vegas. Yo, UK. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Ads. Yeah, Sydney, Las Vegas. That's super cool. Melbourne, Las Vegas. Everyone's in Las Vegas. Amazing. Bonjour, Celine. Where are you? Where are you in the world? Hey, Kimberly. Amazing. We've got some epic people in here. All right, guys. So, I did a quick post like five minutes ago saying if I was to go live in 10 minutes, which is now talking about how to build a business from within and get paid for just doing you, what questions would you have about that? And then everyone wrote some really freaking awesome questions in here, but you guys are on the line. So you guys get priority. So any questions you have around creating business from within, around getting paid from being you, around showing up and not only making a massive income, but obviously a massive impact at the same time. Hey, Nari. Awesome. Hey from Adelaide. Welcome, Kimberly. Oh, you're watching with the kids. That's so cool. What day is it? Saturday. Right. That makes sense. That's awesome. So I'm going to check in on these questions on this post, but now is your time, guys, to hit me. What do you want to know? Hey, Nathan. Hey, Jake. You saying hi to Jake on the line? I'm not Jake. I'm Regan. Oh, no, there's Jake. All right. I got it. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. What have I got down here? Oh, great subject. More on the deeper inner work. Christy, are you on the line? What do you want to know specifically about doing the deeper inner work in terms of creating from business from within? Hey, hey, welcome, Ethan. Okay, Kendall, things to consider pre-launch or just jump on in and start? Okay, well, that's kind of like a double a double pronged question. So yes, jump in and start, right? My big motto, if none of you guys have worked with me before, and I know some of you have and you would have heard this, is start before you're ready. Start before you're ready, okay? Tips on starting a movement. Yo, I love that. We'll get to that. Okay, so definitely start before you're ready. You know what? If you have everything perfect and lined up and ready to go and you're just like, okay, you know what? now I'm ready, then you're starting too late. You've missed the freaking boat, right? It's like done and dusted because here's why, like here's, here's why I say this, by the way, 
I truly believe that business is created from within. And I believe that when you get these downloads, once you truly know how to create business from within and you listen to your intuition, you get downloads, right? Like you get ideas and you get the stuff that honestly just flows to you. Now here's the thing, if you grab that and if you try and then manufacture that, then ultimately it loses its energetic depth. Right? And I know that sounds weird, but just trust me on this because there have been so many times where I've gone, that is the coolest idea in the world and it's totally come from within. And then I've tried to play with it for too long and flesh it out and plan it and make, you know, make sure it's all perfect. And by the time I go to actually launch it and put it out to the world, it's dead and gone. It's flat as a pancake. No one, no one actually gets it or enjoys it or becomes a part of it. Why? Because it's energetically past. It's been and gone. So it's up to you to act fast, right? It's up to you to act fast on these intuitive downloads and go, do you know what? I don't know how it's going to work and it's probably not going to be perfect and maybe I'll just make it up as I go along, but it's your responsibility to act on it, right? Because if you leave it too long, you will, you will literally miss that window. You'll miss that window from intuitive download right through to implementation, okay? So yeah, double, double question there, Kendall. So she said, do I pre-launch or just jump in and start? So just jump in and start, right? But you can jump in and start through a pre-launch process. So here's my number one rule. And anyone that has grown a brand or built a business or launched products with me will know this. Number one rule, write this down. This is like the biggest thing in the world. You do not get out of bed until you're paid, okay? You do not get out of bed until you're paid. I see so many people in business throwing money here and there. You know, it's different if it's like investing in someone to help you, but I'm talking about like product creation and, and putting money down for physical products, putting your time down, putting your time into creating products. And then you put all your time and your money in there and you've got this perfect little product in a box and you're like, okay, I'm going to go market this now. I'm going to go launch it or I'm going to go, you know, put it out to the world. And then the whole world is like, ah, we don't want that right? And all of a sudden, you've lost all this time and all this money, which is not fun, okay? So, number one rule is do not get out of bed until you're paid, right? So, what I mean by that is, yeah, go and pre-launch your stuff. In answer to your question, Kendall, absolutely pre-launch. So, by pre-launching, I mean put it out there and actually launch it into the world and receive money for it before you create whatever it is that you're launching. That is the key. That is the best way to market test something, guys, because that way you know there's a need if someone's paid you. If, if I say, hey, you know, would you guys love this product? And then people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not enough for me. I don't know that there's a need then, right? I just have people that are nice to me saying yes, right? The minute they've paid money and actually invested in whatever it is that you're offering, then, well, duh, you know, that is definitely a way to actually validate that there's a need, right? So, in answer to Kendall's question, things to consider pre-launch or just jump in and start. Start before you're ready, jump in and start, but do it smart and pre-launch it. Do not get out of bed until you're paid. Okay. Let me check in on the questions on here because you guys are live. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Melissa. Yes, Christine. That's happened to you. Okay, no more. Do not get out of bed until you're paid. Hey, Lisa. Okay, how to build an audience and consciousness coach with massive writing, tuning in, but getting to people. Um, so what's your question, Carol? How to build an audience. Oh, I'm, okay, I got it, I read it wrong. I'm a consciousness coach with massive writing, tuning in, but getting to people. I feel like I can't see all of your question on there. Let me check it um, on my computer over here if it decides to load. One second. Let me see if I can pull this up. Okay, in the meantime, how to build an audience. Right, so this is a really valid, 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 valid point. Okay, okay, I can't see the comments. That's annoying. All right, I'm just going to keep persevering on this end then. Okay, biggest thing ever is that even though if you have an amazing message and you're super powerful, even if you're the best at what you do in the world, if no one sees your stuff, you may as well lock yourself in your bedroom and shout about it all day, right? Because ultimately, visibility is everything. So in terms of how to build a massive audience, what you need to know firstly is that it starts within, okay? You can go out there and I could give you a thousand strategies in the world to go and build your audience, but if you're not aligned with 
functioning through a level of visibility, then it's not going to manifest. I've literally had people where, you know, they try and build their audience through, say, Facebook ads, for example, and their ads just, like, get constantly shut down and their account gets just, like, randomly turned off. And, and they're like, Facebook sucks. And I'm like, no. Like, you know, everything's created from within. It then shows up externally. So here's the thing. If you're not aligned to function into a certain level of visibility, then it's not going to show up for you. So the biggest thing I'd be doing, Carol, is I'd be going, okay, what do I, who do I need to become in order to step into that level of visibility, right? What does that look like? Like if that was already done, what would that look like? What would that feel like? What would I be doing every day? How would that impact my life through all areas of your life? Like your relationships, your health, like what would be different? How would you be showing up differently? How would this impact you? How would it make you feel? And I'd be doing all the internal work to align for that, right? Then, only then, once you've done that, I'd be going, okay, cool. If that was like done, if that was a lot Locked in if I knew that was happening in my future, what would I be doing right now in order to accelerate that and have it happen faster? Okay? So again, and, and generally it comes with just messaging and showing up and being on all the platforms online and literally being everywhere through the internet. But just know that there's no point doing that until you're aligned within to actually function at that level of visibility. Okay, let me scroll up and hey Josh, tips on starting a movement. Okay, first thing you have to decide. You just have to decide. I mean, you're never going to start a movement unless you decide that that's what you're going to do. You then need to decide the parameters. Well, how big do you want it to be? Is this going to be a movement of like 10 people? Is this going to be a movement of like hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, right? So you need to get clear on that and again, get clear on the details around that of what that looks like, okay? Hi, 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 hey, hey. Okay, cool. Let me check in for questions down here. Audience building. Hey, Julie. Hey, Ricky Lee. Okay, I'm not getting any more questions through live, so now is your chance, guys. Let me check in. I had a couple on the main post over here. Anastasia, true. You have to be in a positive uh, mentality and emotionally to put that vibe out there. Right, you absolutely do. It starts from within, which is what this whole live stream is all about. Okay, cool. Christine, awesome. Um, my question would be around aligning for massive wealth fast from within. Okay, that's a really, hey Julie, that's a really um, cool topic to chat on and something that I've actually been really actually spending a lot of time thinking about recently. So just to share with you guys, one of my core focuses right now is not just how do I create, say, more cash flow or more visibility in my online business, but how do I take everything I'm doing through multiple businesses, you know, through property, through network marketing, through traditional business, um, through investing in other people's businesses, like how do, I, how do I take everything through all my income streams and actually accelerate that all by tapping into a higher level of wealth creation? Now, someone that's not me would <laughs> probably go, well, Regan, you need to learn all these strategies and do this and that and rah, rah, rah. Whereas I know it's never going to come from there. I know it's always going to come from me, right? So what I've been doing is, okay, what kind of like energy do I need to tap into? What kind of frequency do I need to tap into in order to get into the space of creating wealth creation from flow? Okay. So this is what I would be encouraging you to do. I'd be encouraging you to go, okay, what's the, what's the outcome here? What's the intention? And get really clear, um, be it like seven, streams of income or 10 or five or even if it's just two in the beginning if you've just got the one and then really get into this big picture reality as if it's already manifested right get into the space of going well that's done and get really clear on not only what that looks like through every area of your life but what does that feel like okay that is the biggest thing what does that feel like like energetically and I would literally like shut your eyes and get into that space and when you feel that emotion you're gonna literally tell yourself to okay how do we heighten this how do we double it how do we triple it how do we make it stronger and stronger and stronger so that it's literally almost electrifying through your body because here's the thing the thing with the highest emotional charge that's what's gonna manifest so for me I've been practicing tuning into this vibration of ultimate wealth this vibration or this energy of ultimate ultimate wealth creation and what does that feel like? Now here's the second step. Once you've nailed that, once you can get into that zone and get into that energy like pretty easily, your challenge is to live through that state where you don't have to constantly tune into it, but it becomes your natural state. Now what this means is that when you literally function through life, 
You can't not attract opportunities. You can't not manifest amazing wealth on multiple scales because you're in that state, right? It can't not happen because it's just you, right? Now, here's the thing. People go, okay, cool. I'm going to do my mindset work. I'm going to get in this energy like Regan said. Oh, it feels good for like 10 minutes, right? And then they go about the rest of their day and what happens? They get stressed out. They have to make all these decisions. They're like, oh, nothing's working. And they, they drop that energetic state, right? They drop it and it becomes this like this state of anxiety or or like lack or frustration or just like blandness, whatever it is for you, right? And that's not okay. I mean, you're not going to manifest ultimate wealth and at an extremely high level unless you vibrate at that frequency, right? So my challenge for you is firstly, how do you tap into that? How do you get really clear on what that feels like? And how do you get it going stronger and stronger and stronger through that process? And then secondly, how do you tune in so it becomes your constant state? And look, the best way to do this is just consciously do it multiple times per day, okay? Literally go, okay, cool. I'm going to set an alarm. This is what I do, guys. I'm going to set an alarm like on the hour and when that little alarm goes off, I'm just simply going to stop if you have the ability to stop what you're doing and just two minutes, 30 seconds, whatever, tap into that zone of what that energy feels like to create massive, massive, massive wealth on a really high scale, okay? And then if you notice you keep doing this and it's the daily action around that, you'll notice that you don't need to remind yourself to do it because it just becomes who you are. And before you know it, you've just become the person that manifests massive wealth on a super freaking high level. So... Christine, I hope that helped. <laughs> that was a long answer to your question, but that, that's what I do around that. Okay, let me check in. Okay, let me check. Hi, 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 hi. Kimberly, how to get aligned with gaining an audience? What sort of internal work do you need to do? Okay, great. So um, a few things here, because I mean, I do a lot of this stuff and I help a lot of people with this stuff. I would first get clear on your really big picture outcome. Okay, so in terms of visibility, what does that look like? Like, I, I know a lot of people that say, oh, I want to be famous, or I want to create a massive impact, or I want to be, like, world-known. Okay, well, like, how do you measure that, right? What does that look like? Is it that you have 100,000 followers? Is it that you have 10,000 followers? Is it that you have millions of followers? Like, what does that look like, right? So I would firstly lock that in, okay? I would then go, well, what is stopping me having that right now? Because if everything's created from within and then it shows up externally, if it's not showing up externally, or even, you know, it's okay if it's moving there, but if it's not even moving there, then there's some sort of like block or limitation going on, which is which is stopping that, right? So I'd be then going, okay, cool, what is that? And start getting really, 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 really freaking real with yourself around that. Now, there's so much that can come up around visibility, like too much to go into in this live stream, but here are some examples, right? They might have a fear that, for example, um, their partner doesn't want to be visible, so it would mean losing their relationship, right? That That's one thing that often comes up for people. Um, it might be like, oh my gosh, you know, if, if all these people suddenly saw me in terms of my exposure and my following and my audience, um, what if I did something stupid, right? Or what if I had nothing to say? Or like, what, what, if, um, what if something bad happened and it like ruined everything overnight like whatever it is for you whatever these fears are these blocks these limits you just need to get honest with them and just be like okay well here's what they are right <laughs> lay them on the table basically and be like all right well here's what it is okay secondly no thirdly right figure out the blocks you need to then release them okay now you can do like shitloads of work around this or you can actually just make a choice and just go, okay, like I acknowledge those blocks are there or were there to keep me safe and to prevent me from stepping into that, you know, unknown zone. But hey, I can handle that. And it's it's often just as simple as going, you know what, I'm just going to choose to release that right now. Okay. And then allowing yourself to shift forward. So yeah, Kimberly, that's some of the stuff I'd be doing. Big picture stuff, what's stopping you and then starting to release those limits so you can move forward. Hope that helps. Cool. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Inner work. Massive work done. Always conscious. Thank you for acting, feeling, doing as if it's already happened. Totally stepping it up. That's awesome. Thoughts on limitations, Emily? Yup. Lots of people have them. What do you want to know specifically? How do you release the mindset blocks? Cool, Julie. I just touched on that a little bit. There's lots of different ways to release blocks and limits, but here's the secret. Right, like if I'm really to give you guys the no bullshit secret to how to release your blocks, you just need to make a new decision, okay? So in any given moment of time, you have a choice to make a new decision. Now, 
you can make that decision or you can choose that you can't make it, right? You can choose that, oh, well, it can't be that easy and I have to like struggle for like a year in order to make a new decision. Like someone might say to me, oh, you know, Regan, I'm working on my self-belief. I'm like, really? Like, why don't you just choose to believe in yourself? Like, seriously. Oh, because you've realized or you, you're more like you've, you've believed and, and you've told yourself for so many years that change is hard, that it's going to take forever to believe in myself, that no one believes in themselves, that who am I to believe in myself? Like you've told yourself all these stories, right? So you can either live through the stories and go, well, you know, I have to like stress out for years until I gain self-belief, right? Or you can go, okay, it's kind of ridiculous that I don't believe in myself. I mean, if I don't believe in myself, who's going to believe in myself? And you can just go, screw it. And right, I'm just believing myself myself now right and then you start acting from that space so you start actually doing things that show you as proof to your inner mind that you do believe in yourself you start doing things where you consciously choose to back yourself where in the past you'd probably go oh I'm not good enough to do that right so I mean there's many different ways to work through blocks but I would really get aware on what they are firstly and then secondly just choose to make some really new powerful decisions around them hey Melissa are you still in Bali Joseph, hey, Shatanya, hi. Mostly it's fear, Anastasia, yeah, that's a huge block. Hey, Charlene, Robin, Kimberly, Max. What you're trying to do, the bait for them, who your dream niche will be, and how will you get yourself out there? Is that a question? What what you're trying to do, the bait for them, who your dream niche will be, and how you get yourself out there. Can you put that into a question? I'm not sure what you mean, or whether you're commenting on something I've said, because these comments are delayed. Um, Shatanya, how, oh, uh, how long had you been doing mindset work and being coached before you started taking paying coaching clients? Roughly two months, roughly two months. And it was like seven years ago or something, right? There's no rules. There is no rules whatsoever. There is no rule book guys where it's like, Hey, like, you know what, you have to do all this work for X amount of time and then once you've done that, then you can help other people. Or, you know what, you have to like be online for like five years and struggle and show up and not make any money and then you can help other people. Well done. Guys, <laughs> it's just a decision. It really is a decision. You know, I, I see people, for example, like the very first coaching work I did on myself and then I went out and immediately I applied it in my life and I saw some results and I was like, hey, you know, I can help other people do this too. This is freaking awesome. And I just went for it. I know other people that are in that same course that still aren't actually using any of that stuff because they're caught in the story of, well, I don't have enough experience or I need to know more or my life's not perfect. Here's what you need to know. Everyone is shifting from A to B. Everyone is at A in their current reality and they want to be at B. They're like, they want that ideal result, right? Now, here's the thing. You're also shifting from your A to B through every area of your life. But guess what? You never get to B. You never get to be, right? There's always a B1 and then a B2 and then a B10 and a B50, right? So if you're always going, well, I can't help someone because I'm not at my end result, you're never, ever, ever going to help someone, right? And I'm not saying that to you directly, Shatanya. It's just an amazing question, which I'm telling everyone, right? But I see so many people get caught in this trap of, well, who am I to help someone because my life isn't perfect and I'm not at my B point. You're never going to be at your B point, right? So you just have to get started. You have to get started, all of you. Get started right now go help people Latonya what was your strategy on getting crystal clear on your true purpose I believe I can impact people and the trouble is I can't settle on one direction I have big I can't see the rest of your comment but I'm gonna assume it says big goals and dreams let me see if I can see it on here oh my computer's not being fun that's right, I'm going to assume you are saying you have big goals, dreams, and aspirations. Um, that's a really awesome question. So I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about this now, considering you brought it up. I am about to run a five-day challenge, and it's going to be online, and it's going to be all about figuring out your true purpose and your true message. And then how do you obviously take that and create a life and a business and a brand around that? But the five-day challenge is going to be specifically around tapping into your true purpose and your true message. Now, I've ran this before, and it was $997. I'm going to do it for free, right? I just made that decision the other day. It's not announced. It's not up. You can't register anywhere. But what you can do, if you guys put in your email in this live stream, I will go through one by one, <laughs> and I will 
will grab all your emails and I will register you guys for it so that you have access for it and it's gonna start probably in the next couple of weeks all right so honestly that's probably gonna be the best answer to that question because that's gonna break down everything you need to do to get into your true purpose to get on purpose in your life to unlock your core message and if you are already on purpose and you already know your message it's gonna be all about well how do we take this deeper how do we get you into an even more exciting place in your life in your purpose with your mission so again I'm gonna be running that challenge it's usually $997 I'm gonna run it for free for the first X amount of people I haven't decided on the numbers or the details but if you put in your email on this live stream I'll make sure it gets emailed out to you um, when it all goes live um, cool because there's gonna be lots of really awesome exercises for you guys to do on it Tom, hey, love your answer to this question. Just identified my blocks recently. I'm in the process of releasing. Good for you. That's amazing. 100% Lisa. Yay, Olivia. What time is it in London? Hey, Philippa. Loving this Regan. So great to catch you live. Truth bombs being dropped. Yo, you'll be back in Bali end of September staying for six months. That's so cool. Well, we're there too also. That's amazing. I'm going to believe myself from right now. That's awesome, Jenny. Super cool. Shatanya, yeah, really. <laughs> Hey, Regan, greetings from Poland. Nice to have you on. Hey, Caitlin. Oh, Max, don't mind that. Keep up the great work. Cool. Shatanya, how much did you charge your first client? Oh, my gosh. This is, like, the coolest question. The other question I get asked, which is relevant to this answer, is um, what's the most proud moment in my business, right? What's the most proud moment? And it's so funny because it is receiving that first payment from my very, very very first um, one-on-one -on -one coaching client, which was like six, it must be seven years ago now, right? And for like, I can't remember exactly how long it was, but it was either eight sessions or 10 sessions, right? It was something like that. And it was $300, right? Total for all of it, right? And obviously now, like sitting here charging tens of thousands of dollars for people to work with me, it's like, it's crazy. But honestly, $300 for, for eight sessions or 10 sessions and they were like way longer than an hour. Like it took me forever. They were like two hours each. But that was honestly, that, you know, that's the, the coolest moment in my business. That is my most proud moment, one of them. That is one of my most exciting moments. And more than anything, you know, yeah, that's, that's something I'm, I really will always remember because it was a really big deal at the time. I mean, I was stuck in time for money, so I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And I divided up all the hours, and I'm like, that's a really good hourly rate. Like, that's how I was looking at it. I wasn't looking at it at, at what value do I bring to this person's life. I was like, you know, how much money do I get paid? And um, yeah, it was amazing. And here's the thing, the, the belief shifted because because I, I went in that moment and I went, okay, well, if someone can pay me $300 for this coaching package, I can do it again, and I can do it again, and I can do it again, and there's more people, and then eventually maybe I'll believe in myself more and I'll increase my rates, and then I can do it again, right? And it just kind of clicked for me, right? So you just, guys, if you're starting out with wherever you're at in your business, with your brand, you just need to get started, and there's no rules. Just charge what feels good for you. Honestly, there's there's no like, oh, you should be charging this or that, or that's too much or too little. Just charge what feels good. Start where you need to start, and know that it's not forever, and it's not like pouring concrete on that price right you you can make you can make it increase over time you can not like it doesn't matter there's no rules okay but um that, that was a really proud moment for me it's an awesome question Kimberly this sounds like me uh, thinking I am uh, good enough to change because I'm not perfect yeah right so many people get stuck in not being perfect enough Shatanya, I'm seeing my own results. Want to help other people get paid for it awesome you should come to Bali I've still got to go through your email by the way I haven't forgotten it Awesome. Okay, cool. Email addresses. Email addresses. Amazing. Okay, cool. All of you got yet. Yeah. Okay, all right. You guys are all going to get access because you're live on this. I've been thinking to reduce my price, which is not over the top because oh, I can't see all of these comments because people are not ready to invest in themselves. I've ditched the ladder and it, I'm going to guess it feels good, Robin. I can't see the rest of it if you want to add it on and I'll find it. Um, yeah, if you're thinking of reducing your price point, just please, just guys, go with what feels good. There is no rule. There is there are no rules, right? And here's the thing. If you reduce your prices or if you start out and you're kind of like, oh, maybe that's a little bit low. If it's not in alignment, I mean, that's not going to sell either. So here's the thing. 
there's no like there's no system around oh you know it should be this much or it should be that much for your products or services it literally needs to be a download of what number feels good all right does this feel good okay cool and here's the thing if it's out of alignment either way if it's too little or too much ultimately people just won't buy it or, or very little will right and and it'll be slightly kind of off and you'll know it's off you'll be like mm, it was the price point right but if it is in alignment and people buy it and it's awesome and you'll see the sales start coming through I promise you there'll be a moment in time where it's it stops feeling good right and you'll either have this moment of literally I need to put my prices up or you'll be you'll almost I don't want to say you'll get a resentment because that's a really strong word but you'll feel a little bit like oh you know for example I have to coach this client and it just almost doesn't feel worth your time the whole process of it and in that case you need to check okay do I still love the work yes Okay, well then what's wrong? Okay, well I'm not receiving the value that I feel I'm giving. It's not a fair exchange. And that's when you go, okay, cool, time to shift it up, right? So that's how I do it from within. Cool, uh, challenge emails coming through. Yo, yo, awesome. Ditch the letter, it doesn't feel good or right to me uh, to reduce the price because they can't afford it or whatever. I've ditched the letter, it doesn't feel good or right to me to reduce the price, they can't afford it or whatever. Oh, right, okay. Okay, I okay, understand. So if, if you're talking to a client and you've got your price point, which feels good, and they're saying they can't afford it, no, you don't change your price. No, it's not about that. Um, if someone's saying they can't afford it, I mean, I would do one of two things. Um, firstly, I would offer some sort of payment plan where it's more feasible for them to do like some people literally can't afford it and like if they physically can't afford it then okay well you you know you can't receive money off someone who doesn't have the money to give you um but at the same time i'd also be looking into well how badly do they really want it you know ultimately i mean i've invested so much money in my own you know coaching and, and development and education and a lot of the time it's been money that i didn't have it's not like i just had it sitting there in a pretty little account which said go invest me like it wasn't that you know i literally had to take out credit cards and loans and i've been in over a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt like you know but i made it happen because i was so committed that i was like well i can't not do this right so i'd be going back and looking at their commitment and it's like well how, how bad do they really want it or is it just kind of a fun idea where they're like oh i can't afford it right now um let me know if that answers your question all right, I'm going to check in questions from this end. Questions from this end. Taking notes. Cool. Oh, I had the worst experience before. So I've been, I haven't slept for over 24 hours, right? I landed in Malaysia, got in at like 2 a.m. last night, had to finish my presentation because I hadn't done it. <laughs> like couldn't sleep because I was like oh my gosh you know when you have to be awake so you kind of keep yourself awake because you're worried you're gonna oversleep so I didn't sleep even though I was lying in bed and then got up went and spoke I just finished up on stage and then I did a live stream a private live stream in the success tribe so all you guys can go watch that and then in the meantime I ordered food which got dropped off and it's like this favorite noodle dish I have with prawns in it now I don't eat meat right but I eat seafood and I was so hungry because I hadn't eaten in 24 hours either. And I'd been on stage and I was literally like, oh, like the scavenger eating my food. And then I was like, what is that? And I was chewing and it was chicken, right? <laughs> now, I haven't eaten any meat ever for like over four years, right? And I was like, oh my God, I've been eating chicken for the last two minutes. Like, I kind of just like didn't know what to do. And then I felt all weird. And then I was like, I feel sick. And I was like, no, it's in my head. I feel sick. I'm going to be fine. It was like one piece of chicken. So it was a really traumatic experience. All right, guys, what other questions? <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna hear more about my eating habits. Okay, let me check in on. Um, Christia, so you're on the line. You had a comment more on the deeper inner work. Do you have a specific question around that that you would like answered? Let me know. Um, Nathan says, "How to start properly in business and time management." Okay, cool. Well, how to start properly? I mean. If you're looking at, <laughs> everyone's like, poor chicken. <laughs> it, was, it was traumatizing, guys. It was absolutely traumatizing. All right, so in terms of how to start properly, if you're starting your personal brand and your business, 
they're really are no rules. But if you would like some guidelines where I would start is number one, I would get really, really, really clear on your true message. I would get clear on what is within that needs to be unleashed. <laughs> Melissa, you're awesome. Thank you. What is what is within that needs to be unleashed? What is this true message that you are called to share with the world? What were you put here to say? And and if you're really like really unsure about this, I always say to people, you know, if you were to get a megaphone or a speakerphone and like say one or two things to the entire freaking world and you knew that everyone who needed to hear this was going to hear it, what would you say to them, right? What would you say to them? What would you need them to know? What would be really important? What would come from within? Okay, and again, guys, if you've just jumped on, I'm going to be running a five-day uh, challenge online in terms of how to figure out your core message and your true purpose in life. I usually do it for $997. I'm going to run it for free. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be this month. If you want the details, just put your email in because I don't even have the registration pads up, but I can add you guys to it so you get it, okay? So, step number one, I would get really, really clear on your true message, um, Nathan. I'd get really clear on your true message. Secondly, I'd look at how do we increase your visibility, right? Because if no one can actually see your message or hear your message or read or understand or know your message, then, then what's the point in having a message, right? So how do we increase the visibility? Thirdly, is that you must solve problems for the people you want to help. Okay, so you need to start looking into well, how can I how can I solve problems that shift people from where they are to where they want to be? Right, that is a freaking important thing. There are so many people that are showing up online that have a really inspiring message and a big following, yet they're not making any money, and they're like, "Pretty good, I'm not making any money." I'm like, "What are you selling?" And they're like, "Well, I uh, blah blah blah," right? And it's like, well, hello, like if you're not putting any offers out into the world and if you're not actually solving problems for people, then how do you expect to be paid? You only get paid when you add massive value and when you shift someone through into working with you, okay? So that's what I do. True message, um, get seen, and then thirdly, solve these problems. Okay, let me check in on questions. There's lots coming through. Okay, you're trying to word it, Chrissy, cool. Recently, I remember you saying that your audience grew and exploded rapidly. What steps did you take on social media to reach more people? Okay, a few things. Um, it all started from within. Go and watch the beginning of this live stream because I've already talked on that and there's there's nuggets in there. There's, there's gold in there, okay? So I aligned for the level of visibility that I was shifting. And by the way, that never stops. I align daily as it shifts up and up, as you guys should too. Um, secondly... I unleashed my message and I do it daily, right? I show up, I message, and I add massive value, okay? That is the biggest thing. That is literally it, right? As long as you're in alignment for it and then you start showing up everywhere. Now, I mean through every platform. I'm literally on every social media platform possible and I'm on there daily, right? So that is that is huge. It's, and, and here's the thing. It's daily messaging. It's not like you know, one really great video once every three weeks, it's the daily consistent action around it. And it's just trusting that in the beginning, it might not all explode. But if you keep doing it, it does gain momentum and it picks up over time, okay? Victoria, how did you get your first clients? Was it through marketing or word of mouth? Okay. Um, technically, it's marketing, I guess, if we're going to put it in a bucket, but it's not paid marketing. So let's get clear on that. Um, I don't use Facebook ads. In fact, well, I do now. My team are literally starting to roll out some Facebook ads in my business um, like, you know, 20 days ago or something. So Facebook and any sort of paid marketing is not what has got me to where I am now. Okay, so just realize that firstly. But yeah, technically it's marketing. It's showing up, it's sharing a message, and it's moving people through to the next step through an organic following and through word of mouth. Um, so yeah, it's still marketing because you're showing up and you're, you're presenting yourself and your message to people. But for me, it's, it hasn't been paid. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I'm not saying that you know Facebook ads are bad or anything like that. It's just not a strategy I've used. I haven't actually invested any money in my marketing um, other than what I do organically online, which is pretty cool. Okay, Christy, I think I know the answer, but love listening to you. But more than just the inner work that calls in and attracts the client that fit with our soul work. Is that the question? Where's the rest of it? More than just inner work that calls in and attracts the clients. Okay, I think you're asking me what inner work to do in order to call in um, 
clients that fit with your soul work. This is a great talking point. Uh, so for ages in my business, um, I had a really successful business, well, multiple businesses, but my clients weren't soulmate clients, okay? There were clients who were, yeah, like, oh, there was the odd person, of course, right? But in general, I would kind of be like, okay, cool, like, they're fine, but it kind of felt like work, right? It, it wasn't a soulmate relationship, but now, if I look at my tribe, and especially the people I work with privately, I'm just like, they're freaking amazing. Like, I would just hang out with them all day, every day, right? Like, uh, I mean, they're, they're incredible, but they're incredible for me to work with, but they haven't shown up by chance. I've been very intentional around this. So I do a lot of mindset work, a lot of inner work, a lot of journaling around what that tribe looks like and who do I need to call in and how do I start aligning to that? right? How do I start getting total clarity around who do I want to work with and what do they look like? And now let's get this clear. It's not a freaking like, you know, age demographic or male or female, unless that's relevant to you. For me, it's like, who are they at their soul? All right, here are some ideas. What are their fears? What are their dreams? What are their desires? What keeps them up at night, staring at the ceiling, wishing that was different, hoping, praying, dreaming about? Like, what is that stuff? Because honestly, if you can tap into that, if you not only get clarity on that, but then you talk to that, holy shit, you know, watch your business blow up and watch literally these ideal clients be magnetized towards you to the point where you're like, holy shit, like everyone I'm attracting is freaking amazing, right? So let me know if that helps you. Cause it, I mean, it's very intentional with me, very intentional. Sounds good. How did you go about building your team? Great, same answer as all the other questions, Charlene. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. I keep saying the same thing. Started from within, right? I started, okay, actually, that's a lie. Firstly, I started building my team and I noticed that the team wasn't quite gelling and it wasn't quite perfect and a couple of, you know, challenges and, you know, VAs dropping off and usual things like that. I'm going to turn my music down, like having a party. Okay. Um, and then I was like, okay. And I, I got into this place of going, hmm, like, why is my team not perfect? Why can't I have a perfect team? Why can't I have people that are aligned with my vision and freaking amazing to work with? So that's when I made a decision and I went, okay, well, just like I call in my ideal tribe, I'm now going to call in my ideal team, right? So I started getting really clear on who are these people, what do they look like, you know, what makes their heart pump, what is their vision, what are they excited to be a part of, how does that all fit together, got total clarity on that, and then I asked myself, okay, who do I need to become in order to attract in those people to work with, and then thirdly, what would I need to do daily in order to actually have these people show up in my life, okay? And honestly, like from the minute I started doing that, I was just like, Oh my gosh. And now my team, I mean, I just, I adore them. Like they are family to me. I, I could not think of better people to work with through, through every area of my business. And I'm so grateful. And they know that I tell them that like daily, I'm like, I love you. Right. <laughs> but that it's intentional and it, it starts from within. It starts from doing the mindset work. Okay. Emails, emails, problem solving. Yes. <laughs> Vicky. Hey cat. Awesome. Thanks. We'll be re-watching and listening for sure. So much goodness in here. All right, guys. Well, I think that's everything. I can't see any more questions on the line unless anyone else have any has any more. Let me check in on this post, though. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Hey, Allie. Yo. Cool. Okay, it looks like those are all of the questions that have popped through here. So I'm currently in Malaysia. I came here from LA the other day. I thought I was flying to Japan and then I arrived in Korea. <laughs> and I legitimately thought I was in the wrong country. I went to the um, like flight stand and I was like, oh my God, I'm meant to be in Japan. I'm in Korea, can you help me? And they looked at my boarding pass and they're like, no, no, you're meant to be in Korea, right? So I just completely got the country wrong, but I managed to turn up in Malaysia. I spoke on stage today. It was incredible. The crowd was just freaking awesome and insane. And now I'm here until Monday, then going through Melbourne and then heading to Queenstown, New Zealand for some snow. So really excited to hang out over there. 
So guys, that is it. I can't see any more questions popping through, so let's rock and roll. Remember, I am running a five-day challenge on how to unlock your true message and how to pull out that true purpose. And if you already know your message and your purpose, how do we go deeper? Because there are layers. So you're like an onion, baby, and we've got to just like peel off those layers one by one, right? How do we get really, really, really deep into this core, right? This five-day challenge, it's going to be online. It's coming up. It is usually $997, but... I'm freaking crazy and I'm running it for free. So if you want to be in it, whoa, look at all the love popping up. <laughs> if you want to be in the challenge, put your email below and I will definitely make sure all of the details get out to you once it's live. It's not live yet, so you're not going to get anything instantly, but you will absolutely be on the list if you want access to that. Pleasure. I love and adore you all. I think you are all so freaking cool because you get this stuff and you understand that business totally starts from within. Awesome. And if you're watching the replay, go for it. Just pop your email below so we can rock and roll and get that set up. All right. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to rock and roll. I'm going to go actually watch the rest of the event and catch some of the amazing speakers here in Malaysia. I love you all. And remember, of course, you absolutely can have it all. Ciao.